Welcome back guys. Well, today you're going to find out who won the 2000 subscriber giveaway contest that I had. So stay tuned. Uh, also today I want to talk a little bit more about morels. Tis the season for mushroom foragers alike to be taking to the woods and having their eyes on the ground looking for the prize. You know, there's lots of edible mushrooms out there and there's lots of non-edible mushrooms out there. So today I want to teach you a little bit about morels. Um, just a warning, I'm not an expert and if you're identifying wild edibles in the forest you should use, you know, textbook or field guides and, uh, and have an expert with you to fully know what you're looking at. Here's a really great field guide to mushrooms. It's called the National Audubon Society's Field Guide to Mushrooms. Of course, these are for North America only. The morels I'm featuring in today's program are the black morels. Now there are other morels as well, including the conifer false morel. There's also the wrinkled thimble cap and the snowbank false morel, gabled false morel, and the snowbank false morel. And there are some other false morels there. Some of the tastiest morels are these, the yellow morels, and those are the ones that you can find in, uh, in and around maple trees, ash, and elm trees. There's another type of morel um, that's called the half-free morel, and that one has a cap that hangs slightly over the stalk. So I just want to show you what they look like in their natural environment. This is the true morel, it's the black morel. And again, you can see the, uh, the honeycomb there, nice stalk, the size of my finger there, the size of my hand, very cool. So here it's growing in a bit of a mixed forest. Got some birch, maples, conifers, and there it is. Here's another type of morel. It's one of the earliest ones that comes out during the year. It's a type of false morel. Um, it is a wrinkled thimble cap mushroom and it has a very pithy stalk. And you can see here when I cut it lengthwise that that stalk is filled with a pithy cottony like material that attaches to the top of a loosely hanging cap. So very different from you know the true morels that we were looking at earlier. This morel um, is considered toxic. Uh, it can cause gastrointestinal upset as well as lack of muscular coordination in some people. As you can see, before we picked it, it looked like this. It had that white stalk and had the cap that was hanging over top of the stalk. When I take it off, you can see here how it's attached right at the top of the cap and the cap hangs over. That's a wrinkled thimble cap morel. And that is a verpa bochemica. Again, not one that I would eat. And here we have the gyromitra species of the false morel. And these guys are sort of growing near conifers and that's how they look in their natural environment. So here's a couple of examples of uh, the black morel. Faded a little bit since I picked them the other day, but they tend to be sort of a darker uh, color than the yellow morel. This one I've already taken the stem off of, this one I have not. The cool thing about them is that one of the defining characteristics, and always, always, always use your field guide to identify them, not this video, um, but you can see the honeycomb patterning there in the, the cap. And then this one, this example too, this is a sort of a smaller one. And the key thing is that when you cut them lengthwise, like so, let's just show you. There we go. I'll cut this one as well. You can see, well for one this one's got bugs in it, <laughs> but uh, what you can see here is that the, the cap here is continuous with the stalk when cut in a lengthwise fashion. So open it up there, you can just see it's totally continuous. Same with this one, but like I said, I've already chopped the, uh, I've already chopped the uh, stalks off. So they've got that honeycomb like texture that you can see and the cap is continuous with the stalk. 
in the half free morels, um, you'll, you'll notice is that the cap goes and slightly hangs over and comes back around and joins up with the stalk. One thing to note about the black morel is that uh, they should be eaten in moderation and uh, you can have a reaction, um, like a gastrointestinal reaction, if you eat them with alcohol. Um, that's what I've read. So always eat them in a smaller amount. Um, always make sure you identify them properly in uh, at least a couple of field guides and uh, go out with an expert to know what you're picking. Let's take a look at uh, the false morel that we have around here called the conifer false morel. So here we have a specimen of the uh, conifer false morel or gyromitra esculenta. And as you can see, it's kind of got a different cap. If you're actually to look at it closely, it just kind of looks like a whole bunch of little worms all kind of piled up. Kind of like a brain-like cap, a lot of people uh, describe it as. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it's quite different, actually. It's got this stalk on it. And you'll see when we cut it open, it looks quite different. So this one is toxic. It has a compound in it um, that some scientists discovered uh, that was used to manufacture rocket fuel. So it can make you very sick. Um, some people claim to eat them, but I mean, toxins do build up over time and can make you quite ill. So I would not eat these at all. Okay, so now that we've opened this up, you can see there's numerous chambers in here. Um, see there's different like sort of pockets within the, uh, within the cap and the stalk. So you can see how it looks quite different from the other morel that we looked at. So you can see down here, there's like a cavitation um, you know some of it, it folds in here lots of little pockets it is not continuous with the stock and looks completely different on the inside so there you go the conifer false morel toxic do not eat this let's go to the kitchen to take a look at how to cook morels now we're going to prepare the morels. So what I want to do now is I'm going to um, just very lightly rinse these. Now they're quite brittle, so you don't want to overhandle them or scrub them or anything. And uh, we'll chop them up and put them in some heated butter on the oven. And the, any little major stem pieces there? I mean, they aren't they are edible, but they aren't as tasty as the rest of uh, the mushroom there. Sometimes you can see little holes in them here, and that's where little worms have kind of bored in. Um, so you kind of want to rinse them a little bit to uh, if there's any little critters in there. But it's just extra protein. And with morels, obviously be 110% sure of uh, you know what you are foraging for. And uh, when in doubt, throw it out. They're very flavorful mushroom, very hearty. So I like these guys pretty unadulterated, like they're fairly plain. I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt on them. And there's just a bit of margarine or butter in there right now. Starting to look good, cooking in their juices there. So once you've rinsed your fiddleheads, you're going to stick them into uh, some boiling water for about 10 minutes. And I've added a bit of salt to the water as well. So you want to make them till they're just tender. Set a timer there. Part of the reason why we're cooking the fiddleheads um, is that they do have a, a toxin in them. And so it's important that we, um, we cook them for about 10 to 15 minutes or you know you can steam them for 10 minutes and make sure that we, uh, we're going to change the water out uh, after we cook them and rinse them again. Um, this toxin can cause uh, gastrointestinal upsets um, anywhere between 30 minutes to 12 hours after ingestion so you pretty much don't want to uh, run into that issue. So now the fiddleheads are cooked they're um, quite tender but not mushy or anything like that. I've rinsed them again a few times under cold water and now we're going to put them in the skillet with some garlic and butter. Doesn't that look good? Now I'm just going to cover them for a few minutes to let them steam in their juices. And while I've got everything else cooking, I've just started a, a couple of potatoes as well. Put the morels in a hot plate now to uh, 
keep them warm before supper. And I'm just going to do a little bit of extra protein here. I'm doing a few little uh, tofu steaks in the, the juices of the morels. So I'm just going to get four there. Just put them in a little bit of cornstarch as well to make a little crispy coating. And then we'll just periodically flip them so they don't burn. There we go. Make them so they're a little bit crispy on the outside. This is just plain tofu. There is a little bit of herbs within the tofu itself, but nothing to overpower the flavor of our wild edibles. I'm just going to take you over here to take a look at these fiddleheads, and they're done. I just removed the cover, and they're nice and tender, and they smell nice and garlicky, so these guys are ready to plate. Okay, well, let's plate this. These are just boiled with a bit of salt. There's our tofu, but you guys can pick your protein of choice. Last but not least, we're going to put our morels on top of the tofu here. Doesn't that look great? I'm trying to make it all perfect here. This is going to be a really savory and tasty meal. I'm going to get really fancy. We're going to just top it off with another wild edible, the violet. Doesn't that look awesome, guys? spring wild edibles meal all right let's give it a try mm. the morels are really flavorful big time this is great they're very um savory they've got kind of a meaty texture almost like chicken i'd say it adds a lot of flavor to the tofu as well let's try some fiddleheads Mm, very mild and uh, quite tender and I just love the added garlic flavor. This meal is a success. Well now's the time you've all been waiting for to hear who won the 2000 subscriber giveaway. So I've got a lot of ballots in the contest. Um, I've got all your names in my phone here in a text file and I've entered it into a random name picker. So we have 173 ballots. So competition stiff. So let's see who won. Giving you guys a little close up here of my phone. And uh, it's telling me that I can just shake the phone and it'll select the name. So I've got all your entries in here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just shake my phone and we'll pick a winner. And the lucky winner is Sean Leinhard. Congratulations, Sean. Don't forget to send me your information via personal message through YouTube and I'll get the prize pack out to you as soon as possible. Thank you everyone. I really appreciate all your support of my channel, all my subscribers and viewers for helping make this channel a great success. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot today and congratulations to the winner. Please don't forget to PM me your address and I'll get the gifts sent off to you in the mail. As always guys, have a great week. Take care.